Well, thank you so much for jumping in um, to this Zoom call with members of the uh, Permaculture Education Institute programs to have a, an encouraging conversation as part of your Kickstarter um, to support the Cultural Emergence card deck. And I'm really excited about the development of these as a, as a tool for permaculture educators. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation here. I know you have a series of questions that you wanted to explore. So maybe um, just for, for those who are here as part of this call, just to give a little bit of background about Luby. I, I know those people who are listening to this who are um, part of the Kickstarter probably already know Luby's backstory, but Luby is a permaculture teacher, social permaculture facilitator, co-founder of Applewood Permaculture Centre in Herefordshire, England. Um, she's also the author of Cultural Emergence, offering a framework and a toolkit to enable us to design the world we want to, uh, want to be in, informed by Indigenous wisdom, permaculture design and systems thinking. And Luby's also authored, um, as I mentioned, the Cultural Emergence uh, book. She's, uh, and also one of the books I really love, well, all of your books I really love, but set a beautiful little book called Seven Ways to Think Differently, uh, Embrace Potential and Respond to Life and Discover Abundance. And before that, you also had a book called People and Permaculture, which is a brilliant book outlining really kind of the basis of, of social permaculture. And in amongst there somewhere is a poetry book, I understand as well. So um, uh, uh, an innovator in the permaculture education space and really opening up the possibilities for us to find the ways that we can dive deep into into our communities and build that courage and the resilience and the possibility for unfolding a new way forward and so thank you for joining us here Luby and um, I'm going to pass over to you now to open your part of of this session. Yeah, this is uh, this is great. Yeah, we it's it's interesting. We're talking to two networks here deliberately to encourage more ags network and to encourage my network and to uh, see what the collaborations are. And this is really part of um, cultural emergence. Is this bringing together two things or more things and seeing what emerges from that? What can grow out of these connections? So we're in these encouraging conversations, creating these fields of encouragement so that I, I, I'm I feeling um, encouraged in the process of the Kickstarter and in pro the process of producing the card deck and being leaderful in cultural emergence going out and becoming a global movement and also encouraging more ag and encouraging our networks and seeing how we, that courage and that giving and receiving of encouragement is so vital for us at the moment and we we all need it and the more we get of it the more we can shine the more possibility we have for following our visions and our individual visions but also our collective vision that big collective vision which can seem so distant and unobtainable when we have that contrast between the vision that we we somewhere in our hearts as um, Charles Eisenstein says that you know another world our hearts know is possible but when we look at the reality of the the headlines and what's happening in the world there's there's a bit of doubt isn't there there's like a doubt and that what we need to kind of cross that doubt bridge is some courage that and the and to know that there's other people as well that are crossing that um doubt bridge which is a term i've never used before so i love that these conversations bring out something in the moment that's just like oh yeah that's that's a great term the doubt bridge <laughs> how do we cross that and and use courage to do that so uh, already something new has emerged from this conversation yeah i mean maybe maybe we start there and more i guess like how you know you're you're very prolific in the world um, and sorry, I haven't done my introduction to you, but you're over in Australia, you've got these amazing um, permaculture programs, you work with perma youth and uh, been pioneering that with your children, which has been amazing to see that relationship 
their grow and how you've really encouraged them into their um, leadership as well and then supporting refugees and I'm sure there's many more things that you do that I haven't <laughs> even mentioned here but it's, a, it's amazing and how do you find the courage to step forward into your leadership in, in the world? You know there's this fire in my belly that switched on when I was about mm, uh, in my teenage years when I saw the destruction that was going on in the world, when I saw the possibility of humans annihilating one another and, you know, as a teenager, it just hurt so deeply. I remember feeling incredibly at odds with humanity, feeling really angry at humanity thinking, I, th I remember writing an essay at school talking about how I perceived humans to be like this cancerous force on the earth. And I was just in that, that stage of being really angry and I was out protesting and I was always about like, no, it's wrong. And this, this fire was burning, but it was kind of eating me up at the same time. And then I started to discover ways that I could channel that energy into creating a new story living into that new story connecting with other people and once it started to be not just about me but as a community and feeling that collective fire the collective energy the collective inspiration and how I could just see so many people coming in contact somehow with that collective energy and it just rippling out and it's something that's deep inside like that 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 feeling of there's, there's a feeling like I want to say urgency but it's not that it's just this deep passion and commitment that I know that humanity is actually like humans are really good humans are loving humans are kind and it's about finding a way to lift that aspect. And when I see that happening, it, it gives me courage to continue on, to know that we are, we can surround ourselves with incredible people. So that kind of, for me, brings it back home. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, if I feel like I'm going in a direction that it's not working or I'm starting to have doubts about things, like I start to feel... It's like actually like this pain right in here. Like it feels like this constriction. I get stomach aches and headaches and I just find myself doing that sort of thing. And, and then I just go for a walk out in nature or go and play with the kids or cuddle a chicken or something, plant some seedlings. And I just find that ease off. And again, and then that the flame, it's almost like I put a damper on the flame and it just starts to kind of wither but when it sort of when I breathe in again breathe into the what what's really around and connect with place and connect with community connect with family connect with you know like just noticing stuff around like the beautiful bird that flew past whatever that might be or just watching just before you came in this gecko crawling up the window out here and massive great thing and and um and just yeah feeling into that and that helps to ground me so there's I also do find a massive amount of courage somehow from everyone who's in this room for example because you're all here you've all turned up to be part of these conversations and you all turn up all the time to be part of these conversations I absolutely love you to death you know <laughs> you're amazing and you know the fact that you keep coming showing up and going out into the world doing the work that you do and then bring back that inspiration in so many different ways that gives me courage as well to keep moving forward and sharing out and keeping on creating spaces where conversations can happen 
I love that. And I was really feeling that when you were saying that, like about the fire and that it's dampening out and that you need to breathe and just really imagining that where, which you do when you're fire tending that like, oh, the fire's nearly going out. I need to breathe on it. And it's like the different ways we breathe on our own fire. Absolutely. Yeah. And, th and I was also thinking about how the difference between when we think about humanity collectively and we can really think about oh my god we're you know we're such a destructive species we're so um you know just on a kind of species suicide mission here with what we're doing with the planet but then when we look at individuals how different that story is when we have that connection with individuals or with other groups of just like oh you're so creative you're so kind you're so loving you're so thoughtful you know and and having feeling that on an individual level and it seems like that that um disparity between how we think about in individual people and collectively as humanity is quite a common difference really isn't it of uh, um of how we talk about individuals and collectively i think that relationship is is everything the more that we feel that deep interconnectedness and our lives are interrelated and we just we we're 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 joined in some way when and that's what I find too you know particularly in this the work that we do in communities with in East Africa like it's not just it's not just like oh we gather money to help refugees you know it's that label even itself and we've had conversations with with a number of the you know, young people over there saying oh, we don't want to identify as being a refugee like I'm I'm a young woman, I'm a person, I'm a creative, I'm a songwriter, I'm a I'm an educator. And so it's about being in relationship and finding the humanity together and understanding each other's situation and context. And and the more that you do that and the more that we build those relationships, you feel like the enormous courage that it's taken them to be in the place that they are. And to continue to do the work and so I don't know if Roland's here today but we're just talking about um, her finding a way to support her to write a book about her journey her journey from escaping the Democratic Republic of Congo and finding a way into Uganda and then you know finding a way into permaculture and how then she's stepped up as a leader in that and, and her courage her story of courage and so um, you know and that's happened because there's been this global community being in relationship with her. And she's inspired so many people here, including me, and, and it's gone both ways. And so it's not just about having this, you know, uh, an impersonal connection. It's really about being in conversation. And, I, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, there's too much talk that goes on. But I find that I, I get more courage and I get more emboldened as well. The more that I know people and people know where I'm coming from and it kind of gives me that space to really step into what I feel like I need to. But unless I know that it's okay to do that, sometimes I think, should I, shouldn't I? I'm not sure whether I should. But when people say, yeah, go on, go do it. It's like, oh, okay, all right, I, I can. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so that's one of the ways we find you know receive encouragement isn't it of just like okay listening to those people that are saying yes do more do more we what we want this what you're offering out into the world yeah lovely um i i wonder if um if we, we might have a go with play with the cards and see what comes if you've got a question for the cards or and then maybe we'll open it up and see if anyone else has a question but let's let's have a play oh gosh what question i have a few questions <laughs> um i i wonder um i need some help to i wonder about actually which book to begin writing and I don't know how to frame that question, but I have about 20 books in my brain and I don't know which one to begin with. <laughs> That's a great question. So which which book? Um, okay, which book to which book to begin writing? Okay. Mm. Mm. 
play. We have this one, which is tend to your own personal culture. Nurture and cultivate your culture. You are cross pollinator between cultures. Become a conscious culture creator. What does that right. say to you then? What's that resonating with you? Well, I think that's the story of the journey as opposed to the abouting story about this or about that. Yeah. 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 So the story of the journey. Mm. Mm. And the and how that's yeah, connects with the emergence of the understanding the of you know and the connections between all the different elements that and what is that emergent process that's happening so yeah no that makes a whole lot of sense to me that was actually the one I was thinking of but <laughs> didn't have the courage to say it <laughs> so, there we go. That, so that was it that was the book you were like yeah. I was like, oh, I should, I'd like to, but I don't think I could. It's a bit, you know. <laughs> it's about a bit about yourself, about your own personal culture and how you've tended that and what that has grown into. Yeah. And yeah, was... I think, who want to read that? Like, you know, it's okay, a bit I... self-indulgent, isn't it? Like, <laughs> Well, I'd like to give you some encouragement for that book because it, I'm, I know that it would be fascinating and that storytelling will be lovely. And it was interesting because when I... um before I picked it there was one that actually um I just went, realized it was one of the anchor points of the design web which I didn't think the design web cards were in here but I just I saw it and went oh and it, this is the integration anchor point and I so I was also saw that and I, I thought I'll see what comes intuitively but I think this also says something it's like what is the web the, what's the things that are bringing that together what's and so that your story you're the one that's bringing those threads together and those stories together so yeah so finding that voice yeah 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 hey um there's Lexi's got her hand up hey yeah. Lexi do you want yeah, to jump so... in and yeah I guess I was trying to rescue you a bit Morag um <laughs> along with you. telling your story because I know humility will get in the way um and also that worry about the, uh, you know, chopping off the tall poppy things. Um, you could mesh it with a really practical guide on how to follow your lead and become enmeshed and pollinate in all of our um, various networks. So you could put a practical aspect to it as well, if that would make your journey in that book easier. Mm, thanks, Lexi. Yeah. Oh, so nice you came and joined us today. <laughs> um, there's a couple of comments in the in the chat too. One was from Jerry yeah. saying, could you speak a little bit more about the concepts of cultural emergence? I wonder whether you, you'd you feel like dropping in a bit of context about that at this point or? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, so uh, as you know, I've got my roots like um, Morag has in perma in permaculture, which is uh, permanent agriculture, permanent culture. So there is a um, a thought there, of what, like what an intention with permaculture to create sustaining cultures. That recognition that the culture aspect is really important. Um, and and I feel that there's a little bit of a misnomer there with the permanent culture that that isn't really what we're heading for is like one place or that we it's a destination it's actually a you know a, a process that culture is a process and um, and then this is where the word emergence comes in that actually it's this emergent process that life is emergence all around us and that we actually need this process that that will create breakthroughs that will actually what we're what what's happening on the planet at the moment is a result of culture and that therefore the solutions will also come as a result of cultural change 
that that's where the solutions come from for climate change, for social injustice, uh, for personal health issues, and and everything else. Um, that it 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 comes from culture, and that that we need this, you know, radical cultural shifts that it's not an incremental process that it's this radical emergent process in the same way that uh water is an emergent process that it's it's not just the sum of the parts but it's completely different and that that is um it's, so it's a systems thinking terms uh, uh of emergence that were um it's not just synergy one plus one equals three but one plus one equals a quiggly doodah or something so that it's something completely and radically different and that's where we are at the moment um and that culture is this web of patterns of thinking and seeing and interacting and behaving and this complex web of seen and unseen patterns so we've got um like the plant here it's like it's all connected the unseen patterns and the what's happening above the surface and that we can tear like so here is that we have the card of tending our own personal culture so seeing as well that we have a personal culture our personal web of patterns and that we can shift that and that those our personal culture is nested within bigger cultures and bigger cultures and much like you were saying about the woman that didn't want to be um you know identified as a refugee she's part of that culture of being a refugee but she's part of many other cultures as well different cultures of being a creative and a permaculture teacher and so how does she tend those parts of her culture to uh be be part you know the strong parts of her um personal culture so those those are the um the kind of premises and the 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 thinkings behind this toolkit which has evolved out of a collaboration between myself and john young with other people being involved along the way including maddie harland and how we have created we've so we've created um practices and principles that support cultural emergence in on our on the individual level as well as with groups um and so then this this you know it went into my book and then this is the idea to then bring these uh, these concepts out into the card deck so that we can play with them and use them so that's uh, <laughs> quite, I know, quite a lot of concepts all in one there <laughs> but uh maybe gives you some uh, I do, yeah. There's a question in the chat, um, and Caitlin, I wonder whether you meant that as being a question to ask the cards. Is that what you wanted to do? Uh, no, well, I don't know. I just, I think I grappled with the idea of like, if somebody said to me, what is your culture? I don't currently feel like I have the words to to describe it or the the thought processes to identify it and um, mm. so i was wondering if there was some sort of garden <laughs> thanks caitlin yeah i think it, that it's it's a big question isn't it it's like uh, what's your culture and it can mean anything from like what's your country to what music do you like you know it's and and everything in between so it is it's it's a really massive question and it's it also relates to those big macro cultures we're a part of like the you know our life stages or um you know I'm an, I'm an adult I'm a woman there's all big macro cultures we're a part of I live in the western world um and then our sort of micro cultures of like okay this is you know the the school I was part of and this is my um you know my family culture and so there's yeah there's many different ways and I, I get I think an exploration to start with of what is what are your macro and what are your micro cultures will give you some indication of like what are those influences on your personal culture um, and what do you want to then identify with more because those can be different things um, and to explore 
explore those um, to to then find your way. Yeah. I also think, Luby, that um, depending, it all depends on context. So if I'm, you know, in England with you, for example, in relation with you and a group that there, like I may show up differently with a different set of bits of me that comes forward. And then if I'm, you know, off hanging out with my brother and my cousin, different aspects of, of me and my coach. So there's like, like there's no, it doesn't feel like there's one thing and it, it kind of emerges from the relationship you have with the place and the people at the time. Like there's a set of things that's within you there's a set of things that's around you, but then there's the bits that are in between as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what's so dynamic and interesting as well and shows you how your personal culture can change um, because you know it does. It changes differently from when you're like with your mum to when you're with your daughter or to with your friends and to, as you say, if you go travel further afield, what's... Uh, important there so yeah certainly the 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 environment you're with um Fleur's just said it there it's environmental it's environmental it's contextual it's relational it's dynamic it's fluid it's changeable and I think this is where the hope comes from and the courage comes from by knowing that it is changeable and that yeah. your own personal culture is changeable you know the culture between two people is changeable culture between more people is changeable yeah yeah we often get caught in this sort of stuckness don't we thinking well that's the way it is and as you said before one of the biggest things that need <clears throat> to to shift and move is our culture and when we understand that it is a dynamic process it is a process not a thing that we can step into it <clears throat> in different ways yeah i think that's really exciting part of understanding um, what culture so thank you Caitlin for asking that question to bring that forward before we go to you Jerry um, there is actually a question from Liz in the chat too she, she's asking Luby are you using culture and identities interchangeably they're so closely linked that they can be seen interchangeably but I think there is there is differences there um, uh, and I don't know if I can quite articulate the differences, um, <laughs> but I would say that they are di they are differences. It's partly partly the oh, oh I don't know more. I do see any. Uh, could you highlight anything on, on that? Well, maybe even oh, what I'm what I'm seeing is that culture is yeah. Well, maybe Liz, you can jump. I got in. I got plenty of things to say about it, but too much. So. I'll I'll, let, I'll listen to you too. <laughs> yeah, you know, what I was thinking was, you know, identity is what you identify with. Like it's a, it's coming from within, whereas culture is the relation, the interrelationship between things and the identity is how you connect with different parts of it. It's like just as a very um, simple d d distinction between the two. I don't know, Lexi, can you, have you got like a 30 second, one minute, Yep. version of your comment yeah you could be born into a culture but you choose your identity what you identify with yeah you choose your identity yeah yeah mm. and Liz did you want to jump in and say anything well identity identity in uh in our western cultures is often um identify uh, uh, class as an individual thing whereas you can actually um un uh, we can understand identity in other ways and as very close to someone was saying about the culture so, um, but uh, depending on how, what sort of understanding of self uh, and uh, then that, then the understanding of identity and identity can be understood as interaction or relational and therefore very connected to culture. But I actually think of culture in a bigger uh, sense, just to be helpful, I think to be to myself, that I think it's a in, really interesting question and worth defining for any you know, taking further steps. So uh, culture can be just taken, of, uh, like go back to what uh, uh, it sort of means in a dictionary. And it's, it's all the things that make up a culture, the way we do things, our understandings of right. this is the way we do things here. 
in this place. This is the way we do things here. So it actually does encapsulate how a person interacts with their children and their friends, because this is the way we do things here. Uh, the difference between how we uh, interact with uh, family, friends, children can be explained or described and uh, not just not explained. I won't try to explain anything, but anyway, it can fit in. So I think it's a really interesting thing. And I've done a bit of study and um, thinking. So that's why I didn't want to say anything. And now I have. Sorry. No, yeah, yeah, thank you, Liz. It's <laughs> great. You. you know, like it's really it's a really good question. And, you know, we, are, we often don't spend enough time exploring these and grappling with these big questions of, you know, what, what is the culture that we're situated within? Often we sort of, we just find our way through our everyday and, you know, don't see all of that texture around us. And so, you know, actually noticing and stepping back and thinking, also asking, you know, do I identify with that? You know, what is my identity within that? Um, and we might find that we you know there's some cultures that we're part of that we that don't we don't include as part of identity but they are operating under the surface so they are guiding us and part of our personal culture even though we've somehow excluded them from our, our identity but they're still operating there under the surface which is where the tending can be really um useful to actually surface those patterns and to have a look at them and say okay is that something that i really believe in is it something i want you know i want to do and that's part of the behavioral change that needs to happen on an individual but a collective level of like you know when we find ourselves maybe uh, doing something wasteful, for example, when we know that on the surface we're saying no, we you know we don't believe in waste, but then we find ourselves doing something wasteful, and it's like we're and and feeling that it's normal and accepted, and then going okay, I'm part of this bigger culture where that level of waste is normal and accepted, although we you know on the consciously don't identify with that. So it's it's helpful to maybe to explore the culture and identity to see where there are dissonances and to become more in line so that I guess the ultimate goal is that our personal culture and our identity comes into alignment. Mm. <clears throat> Jerry's had a hand up for a while. Do you want to jump in? And thank you, everyone, for keeping on dropping in your thoughts in the chat too. Keep that going. That's great. Thanks, Morag. Yeah, this is so, so relevant for me at the moment. So only last night I was talking to my wife about um, some of the blocks that I'm having around the course. So I'm noticing that I'm I'm holding back, you know, I'm avoiding, I'm going really slowly through the material. Um, and I don't really understand why, because I love it. I'm so enthusiastic. I could watch YouTube videos and read books and articles and listen to the podcasts and all the rest of it to beat the band, you know. But for some reason, there's this part of me that's holding back and afraid to step forward and, yeah, do my own design and just make something happen. And I was exploring, you know, like this thing about culture, like I think there's something, what you just said, Luby, about there can be this part of your culture that really operates under the surface, but that you don't necessarily identify with. And I feel like for me, there's something about the, the kind of shame based, keep small, kind of Irish Catholic, you know, don't, don't put your head above the parapet. Don't, don't, yeah, just don't step forward in the world like that is holding me back. Um, and I, you know, I've, yeah, I guess that's something like I'm curious about working with the cards in that way. Like, how do you? I mean, I know there's lots of ways. Yeah, do you, to do you have issues. a question, uh, Jerry? That uh, do you want to phrase it as a question now for yeah, the? Yeah, I'm trying to. The um, gosh, how to phrase it as a question? Well, maybe we um, have a sense of it now. It's about how. Um, how is is kind of two questions isn't it it's like one of how to build momentum with the material mm -hmm. but it's another question of like what's holding you back and exploring yeah. exploring that because there's a 
uh, there's something there isn't there to be worked on it sounds it's not just like time management um it, no there's no. a there's a so so should we ask a question then around uh yeah what's holding you back and see that would be great yeah okay yeah. okay so what's holding you back with okay come into the light <laughs> look below the surface be bold listen to quiet voices bring your gifts into the light mm. what's that so what's that saying to you and resonating with you at this moment mm, it's actually making me feel quite cheerful yeah 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 yeah, thank you for sharing that. It's uh, yeah, so it's um okay. <laughs> Look below the surface, be bold, listen to quiet voices. So maybe that's the yeah. That when I read that I felt the resonance in that and bring your gifts into the light. But I see that listen to the quiet voices where what's maybe when you when you're like feeling that that mo that sort of tension that between wanting to and not wanting to to really be still and quiet and just really like you know maybe go out into nature or maybe just sit and just rather than i i think at that moment you know that it's really easy to go oh distraction oh oh i need to go and do the washing up or like i need to you know check this email or something but to just take that moment to be really still and quiet and see what those little voices those those quiet voices are saying what their wisdom is there and where and then bringing that into the um bringing those voices into the light so you can actually look at them which it sounds like you're already starting to do of like that you know what's those that conditioning that we've you've received about being in the light what does that mean to you to come into the light and and the recognizing that doing this program with morag is encouraging you to come into the light and there's some tension and some fear and doubt that might be stopping you yeah mm, thanks jerry thank you thank you so much yeah um there's a uh a few comments coming through in the um, in the chat about that um, relating to different things. Yeah, yeah. Thanks everyone for keep that coming. There was a hand up before as well. Did anyone else want to jump in and ask a question of the cards? Is that have you got your hand up there, Ros, or are you just at the front of the queue? No. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's yeah. Yeah, oh, Lillian, I, Lillian. Hi, Lillian. You had your hand up. Go ahead. Now, Lillian, yes. I have to say, I'll be, just because we can't see you, I'm introducing Lillian. Lillian is in Kenya, and Lillian has to be one of the most courageous women that I know. There, there you are. Lillian leads amazing work, and um, yeah, uh, yeah, go uh, over to you, Lillian. I think hopefully many people within our community know of Lillian's work with hundreds and hundreds of um, local women in her region and also um, supporting and rescuing teenage brides and, and young girls um, being affected by domestic violence and early marriages and having children young and bring them to a, a care farm and a care community where they look after them. So Lillian, hello. Yes, um, I was a little bit shy. That's why I put my hat down. Um, I am I'm on a dilemma. I'm thinking about my profession, which I'm a psychologist by profession, and also thinking about my community and the permaculture work that I'm doing with them, which is so much involved. So I'm asking myself, I'm in between, which path should I go on? Back to the cards. Thank you. Mm. 
Thanks, Lillian. Great. Okay. So, so which path should you go on? Okay. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Thank you, Lillian, for your question. It sounds amazing, the work you're doing already. So I'm sure whichever path you go on will be amazing. But let's see what happens. Mm. Okay, we have this one, which is be in courage. Courage is being in touch with our hearts. Being vulnerable is an ability and reframe nervous energy. Hmm. So it, do, how does that talk to you, Lillian? Do you want to read it again? Yeah. So this is be in courage. So be like, encourage yourself, be in your heart. Courage is being in touch with our hearts. Being vulnerable is an ability. Reframe nervous energy. So, um, thank you. So do, how does that resonate with you, Lillian? Does that give you any inspirations on your question? Yes, on, on, on the side of courage and vulnerability, because sometimes when I'm serving the community, I truly feel so much vulnerable, but I want to quit and be on my comfort zone of my profession of being a psychologist and all that. So yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for sharing that, yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> the vulnerability that cut that tension between vulnerability and comfort zones and needing mm. the courage to step out of our comfort zones yeah thank you thank you for all your work you do in the world yeah thanks lillian jumping in and 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 being courageous to still ask your question <laughs> sorry yeah absolutely that was I, I went searching for you <laughs> That, that was the role model. That was actually where you started, wasn't it? Saying I felt a bit shy, but then I had the courage to, <laughs> to, yeah, to yeah. put my hand up and ask. So this, the being encouraged is already working through you. Hey, Lexi, did you have a question? Uh, it wasn't a question. It was for Lillian. Um, the reframing the, was it nervous energy? Yes. Um, in breath work, one of the things we look at is that the, the way we feel in our body, um, nervous energy is the same, whether we interpret it as nervousness or lack of confidence or anxiety, or we can interpret it as excitement but it feels the same. And we often reframe that nervousness to excitement. And when we do that, people suddenly, their eyes light up and they go, wow. So maybe that's a thing for Lillian. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it's that, it's that seeing where that energy is for the different paths and that um that's th thank you lex for describing yeah. that very well of what, what what we name energy and what whether it's well, our culture is to be fearful yes particularly as women yeah 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 and it's like that sort of the the um i think of it like when you're going on stage if you were um you know about to go on stage you'd have a level of excitement or uh, you know that energy happening in your body and you could name it as nerves of like oh my god I, i'm so nervous to do this or you could name it as this is my courage coming to the surface and that's that was where it came from i was actually um doing a presentation on my design around storytelling and I um you know, I I was feeling these like butterflies and I was like what is this and I was like okay actually this isn't nerves this is the courage this is the the energy that's needed to do this in a really powerful way was coming to the surface yeah um, yeah yeah that's a 
and when you when you rename things like that isn't it it's it's quite profound the difference yeah Yeah. so I wonder Luby whether you had any other questions you wanted to pose or whether you wanted to um maybe I just noticed the time actually I know we've been chatting away haven't we it's been yeah yeah no it's been (laughs) wonderful actually what I might do is um is uh take the spotlights off so we can all kind of see each other properly yeah. there we go and um and uh if you wanted to maybe let people know a bit more about what's going on because you, you've got a whole lot of things going on over this next month I believe I have I have yes and um yeah so the um kickstarter around the kickstarter then we're doing having all these encouraging conversations we've got an online community where people can engage and there's a like a free taster course for culture emergence so you can dive in and see some of the concepts and the tools and that's that's free and then um yeah an online monthly community that people can be involved in and then in the summer i've got loads of in-person courses as well you know, culture emergence courses and an in-person permaculture stroke cultural emergence teach training so yeah lots happening but yeah really appreciate people's support with the card deck because that's kind of where my focus is um at this that this moment in time um but i know but that it is part of bigger processes there and I know someone, um, one of the questions asked there by Barb was, uh, how did the cards come about and how were they designed? Um, and this was really recognizing that cards are this magic way of sharing the information and growing ropes of connection and seeing seeing things visually that help us like have layers of memory and meaning and and that they're just really lovely interactive way so i've been actually using the cards um on my courses for several years and with the intention of one day bringing it out into like professionally printed cards that people can um use themselves and share so um i know i've been just really tuning into the essence of the principles um when i was writing the book of just how to display them visually and and how they had to make them talkative how to make the images talkative and then the practices i'm bringing those into um a, like a ma- mandalas to as that is representation of how the practices need to be repeated so the pa- so they're repeated pa- patterns so i'm <clears throat> bringing those in at the moment and working on that and feeling the encouragement of people to that are wanting the card deck so that's the encouragement that i'm receiving to help me carry on um with work and yeah i'm enjoying the process at the moment yeah well, you know, well, i wonder so more like if, if you want to share something about what you're doing for m- my listeners in my networks yeah oh i i, I was just going to actually say look i think you know the card um staying on the cards i think that it's such an important conversation to be having within a network of permaculture educators you know finding the courage and and supporting each other encouraging each other to to step into this space and and i think that's kind of come through so as a tool i think it's really really useful the other thing i would like to encourage people to do would be if you have materials like that or resources that you find that you kind of a you're tapping into some some ideas of what to do feel free to create your own kind of cards as well you know like in, in like we talk about this of creating your own principal cards in the in the course and things that make sense to you so you know I think there's a there's a really great lesson in all of that um yeah absolutely definitely to you know be creative that's really the essence of this isn't it that we um and what i loved about permaculture from when i first came into it it was like there isn't this one right answer one right way of doing it you can adapt and be creative and bring your own solutions and your own imagination and skills into the process yeah yeah, so just in terms of what, what we're doing, so the network that, that you see here, uh, um, people from all different aspects of the permaculture 
educators program that, or any of the permaculture education institute courses so we we have a whole lot of different things going on there and also monthly master classes monthly film clubs weekly podcasts a whole lot of content that people can dive into and get their teeth into suggest topics as well and um, would love to yeah let people know that all of that exists and um, just search up Permaculture Education Institute and all of the different things are now on there from the Perma Youth to the, we have an Ethos Fellowship, which is kind of like a university without walls for young people to study with people like Fritjof Capra and Helen and Aubrey Hodge. And I know um, Luby's um, joined some of the young people before there as well, which has been absolutely fantastic. So that happens. There's so many, so many wonderful things going on all the time. And um it's what I feel is it is a space where you can connect with people all around the world who are finding a way to weave a new story in communities and find a new way of moving forward, whether that be something to do with what's going on in your own place, what's going on in your community or what's going on in your in your work life as well. So, um, yeah, and just seeing that bigger picture of like we know what's going on in the world the, all the crises that we're facing but there are actually this this mycelial web of people everywhere who are connecting through this lens of permaculture and cultural emergence and the other descriptions of that that are kind of creating this different thread of what I call sort of the myceliating web of the power of the new narrative and um, I feel so hopeful because I meet and talk with people everywhere around the world who are who are talking this up and I you know I think what's happening is it's like Jeremy Lent talks about it's kind of like we're weaving new threads through the existing paradigm and and the old threads are gradually dissipating we'll be left with a new fabric of society and it's not like you throw out one and the new one comes in it's actually a reweaving that happens and that's what we're all doing here through these conversations and through the conversations you go out and have with someone because you've just had this conversation and you know it's the conversations are important, the kitchen table conversations, the garden conversations, the, the wherever you are, however you are, and how that shows up. <laughs> it's your book, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I'd really encourage you to go and have an encouraging conversation with someone. And let's spread yeah. that web. Let's reweave the story, reweave, reweave the paradigms and the possibilities from there. Mm. Well, thank you everyone for being here. And thank you, Luby, for coming in and catalyzing this conversation. It's been such a, a beautiful, um, I was going to say evening of conversation, but you're all around the world. So it's been it's been a wonderful conversation. And thank you for all showing up in 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 such a, a beautiful way here today and it's nice to see people who are new to this community it's nice to see people who have not been here for ages come along and ah, oh, I'm feeling really encouraged by this so I am as well you. thank you so much everyone for your questions and your curiosity that's got me my curiosity up and yeah please do support the um the kickstarter as well just really <clears throat> the more people you know and if you can share it as well it's really really appreciated and yeah all right, everyone. Take care. It's been wonderful to see you all. See you next time. Bye-bye.